Garrett, uh, physics of fine tuning. We're at the conference here. is really a hot topic in uh, in physics today and in cosmology. It's been in philosophy and science and religion, theology for many decades. Um, when, when I really try to get into it, and it's a theme I, I like to follow and have been following, I actually like to do it in reverse and look at it. What what are the fallacies? What are the problems? What are some traps, obstacles that that you can fall into if uh, if you go down the fine-tuning route? Well, there are a number of issues, uh, even from the outset when you talk about fine-tuning. Uh, and People will bring up various arguments about why you shouldn't even bother considering fine-tuning. And, and the first argument is that it's all solved or it's all trivial or it's not important. But it really is an outstanding scientific question that we have in modern cosmology. Why the universe is the way it is and why it is, is fine-tuned. Uh, I think a big issue is around this notion that um, it's somehow fine-tuned for us, for us as people sitting here on this bench. But that's not really what the core of the question is. It's not about us and it's not about forming particular kinds of aliens or something in the universe, but it's about complexity. The fine-tuning question is a question about complexity. Why does the universe have so much structure to it? The the way when we play around with the parameters, we see that you can come up with featureless universes without any hope of having structures in them. Without structures, you can't store and process um, information. You can't have thinking creatures. So it's about complexity, not about you or I. Yeah, and so complexity then is the, is, the, is the core that allows you to form galaxies, stars, and then planets. And then from there, you have other rules or laws, call them what you will, regularities, that can enable different kinds of complexity. Mm -hmm. But the fine-tuning in physics starts right at that very beginning. So it, it's really, um, it, it, it's, it has no comment about what happens afterwards. It just asks, can you form those initial yes. complex elements? Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting, actually. Some, uh, I, have, I know people who are historians, and uh, one of the things that they don't like are historians that ask what-if questions. You know, what if... Counterfactual. Uh, yeah, counterfactual, right? So uh, it's, it's a bit of a no-no. And you see a similar kind of thing in cosmology, right? We have mm. the one universe that we have. We should be concentrating on this one universe. Why do you want to think about the what-ifs? What, what ways the universe could have been, uh, could have been different? We have this mathematical structure and it cries out for us to play with the mathematics and adjust these parameters and see what kind of universe we could have. Yeah, some people say though that uh, because you have infinities potentially in a multiverse, that uh, when you deal with probabilities uh, in, in a normal way by introducing infinities, you're, you've actually created a, fall a hidden fallacy in your work. Probabilities are definitely hard, they are core to what people are trying to do here, you know, what is the probability of a universe like our own? Right. What we're really doing is we're, it's not really just playing probabilities with infinities, it's playing probabilities with things that we do not know. We do not know how you generate a multiverse in, in detail, right? We have ideas. So we have a very rubbery structure when it comes to the science of the multiverse. And we're only going to get uh, a more accurate, robust structure with more work. Somebody's one day going to work out this is how a multiverse functions. Once you have that, then you can really start to talk about probabilities. But just because we don't know about probabilities right now doesn't mean that we should put off looking at questions of the multiverse. Uh, sure. Um, other, other potential fallacies are by examining the kind of models you're talking about where you're varying uh, parameters and see that in many cases because of fine tuning you will have a sterile universe. You won't be able to generate complexity. But what you're doing is you're just uh, 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 um, modifying one or two, but the universe has, you know, whether it's 22, however many uh, constants of physics, that if you do some complex combination of some, some they can balance out the others. So if you, re if you, re if you reduce the power of gravity, uh, you can uh, increase electromagnetism or the reverse. Yeah. And so you can, by, by doing combinations, you can get all the probability space for complexity is actually larger than you think. Larger, but still not large. <laughs> so so the, what, you, what happens, I, I give you that yes, you can, and people do play with multiple parameters, it's not a single parameter game. But what you find is that yes, you might have solutions that are potentially universes in which you can have complexity, but they still occupy a small volume of an overall large parameter space. Now again, so how fine-tuned is fine-tuned, to, to me a, a, a very thin ribbon through parameter space is still 
fine tune it to find yourself on that ribbon. Yeah, uh, can you give me some quantitative uh, uh, estimates of what of, of the size of that ribbon in, in pro uh, possibility space? Um, I, I could, but I, I wouldn't want to put a bet on them. I, again, it all depends upon the problem that you're yeah, looking course, at. Of course, of course. Right? So, so pick a number. Pick a number. Uh, very small. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I uh, think I should cheating. leave it. I know, I know it's cheating, but we are dealing with um, uh, to asking about probabilities in a very large space. We don't really have the, the uh, mathematical grunt to go and test all of the places in this space. We don't really know what kind of volumes are acceptable to have complexity. We just know that small variations give us, um, give us sterile universes. And so even if we have this very narrow ribbon through a complicated multi-parameter space, it's still going to be small compared to the overall volume. But I, I said I, I wouldn't want to bet on exactly what that number is.